Calling uh, this meeting of the tax committee to order for March 19th, 2024. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're gonna be taking some remote testimony today. It's our first time doing it, so hopefully it'll go smooth, but it, like if it doesn't, we're just gonna have to roll with it. Um, first item on the agenda is adoption of the minutes for March 14th, 2024. Representative Agbaje, could I have a motion? So moved, Madam Chair. Excellent. Representative Agbaje has moved the minutes for March 14th, 2024. Is there any discussion on the motion? Not seeing any, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no? Motion carries. The minutes for March 14th, 2024 are adopted. Um, first up on our agenda today, uh, we have a bill from Representative Brand, um, and Rep. Brand will move that House File 4486 be laid over for possible inclusion in the 2024 tax bill. Representative Brand, to your bill. Thank you, Chair Gomez, members of the committee. I'm glad to present House File 4486 today, which uh, would provide a sales tax exemption for cottage food in the state of Minnesota. This bill is my attempt to simplify a complex system for small uh, food makers and farmers who sell food and uh, under the MDA's cottage food exemption. And I do have in your packet of information, there's some testimony, but also there is a flow chart that kind of shows all things are taxed or not taxed, depending on what we're talking about here. So as you uh, hear my testimony, take a look at that and try to figure it out. Uh, for those who don't know, cottage food is an exemption from licensure that allows farmers and other emerging entrepreneurs to sell non-hazardous food and canned goods direct to the consumer. For those of you who attend farmers markets, this is often what allows farmers to sell jams and jellies and salsas and things like that for their products. It's an important way for food makers to get started with investing in licensure and require, uh, requires a commercial kitchen. But from a tax perspective, when cottage food producers sell at farmer's markets or direct to the consumer, they must deal with a complicated matrix, as I showed you, uh, to determine what food is taxable and what is not. <laughs> to use an example from the written testimony in your packets, salsa is taxable and spaghetti <laughs> sauce is not taxable because you have to heat the latter to eat it. I suppose you could eat cold spaghetti, but who does <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, this uh, results in a lot of confusion on the part of food makers and farmers, farmers markets. Uh, there's also a matter of uh, equity uh, because when you walk across the street to a grocery mm. store, jars of salsa and jellies and jams are not taxed. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now I'll address a couple of other points before I turn it over to testifiers and this will be the first time we're doing virtual, so uh, fingers crossed. Uh, first, the cottage food exemption is limited, allowing no more than $78,000 in annual sales in my bill. And for 95% of producers, they make less than $8,000 annually. So these are truly small businesses. And second, I acknowledge that I don't myself or the, my advocates expect such a high fiscal note. That's something that we'll be working with the, the department on. We have a couple of things that maybe we want to discuss as well. But uh, the goal is to make our tax system more fair and simple for very small businesses in all of our districts. And so with that, I'm happy to turn it over to my testifiers and I'll be here to answer the questions. Thank you, Representative Brand. Um, so first up, we have um, Kathy Zaman. Um, who's joining us? I am here. Can you hear and see me okay? Yes, uh, we've got you. Thank you for being with us today. Please just state your name as you go ahead with your testimony. Thank you, Chair Gomez, Representative Brand, and members of the House Taxes Committee. I am Kathy Zeman, the Executive Director of the Minnesota Farmers Market Association. Thank you for letting me testify in support of House File 4486 to exempt cottage foods from sales tax via Zoom, because I'm a wee bit in greater Minnesota right now. MFMA supports all 375 plus farmers markets in the state and the tribal nations and their 10,000 or so vendors. Sales tax on certain foods that our food farmers and cottage food producers make and sell has been one of the most vexing issues for us to resolve. Part of the problem for us is that the Minnesota Department of Revenue defines words prepared foods much differently than the Minnesota Department of Ag or the Minnesota Department of Health who issue the food licenses. Exempting all cottage foods from sales tax brings some equity to the cottage foods industry and to our food farmers since all of the baked prepared foods are already exempt from sales tax. 
But other prepared foods like jams and jelly sold by the fruit and vegetable grower, growers who are cottage food producers do have to pay sales tax. And as Representative Brand said, produce farmers who make and sell acidified cottage foods like salsa and spaghetti sauce using the exact same ingredients in both products face a unique conundrum. Salsa is taxed, but spaghetti sauce is not taxed because if you heat it to eat it, there's no sales tax. It is incredibly hard. Um, if you think about all of the cultures that sell uh, prepared foods at a farmer's market and direct to consumers, that many times English is not the first language. And to try to explain this to our many vendors on how to navigate collecting sales tax correctly is a wee bit of a challenge for us. House file, in our opinion, House file 4486 is a good solution for Minnesota cottage food producers, our food farmers, and the thousands of Minnesotans who buy their foods directly from the makers and the farmers. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that there is a fiscal note, and we're looking forward to getting a little bit more information from the Department of Revenue because we think it's a wee bit high. And while we know the total number of cottage food producers and we know the numbers in the two different tiers, we really don't have any data on the total sales of cottage food producers in either category. And, and there's no data on how many cottage food producers make baked items. And of course, those baked items are already sales tax exempt. Nor do we have any data on the number of cottage food producers that make taxable and non-taxable foods. That, that data just doesn't exist. We do provide a guidance list of taxable and non-taxable foods. It's available on our website which is approved by the Department of Revenue. And that list does include, um, it actually includes more non-taxable items than there are taxable items. But even that list doesn't provide data on the sales of taxable foods. So anyway, I'm looking forward to learning more about how those numbers were formulated. So thank you very much for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much, um, Zeman, for your testimony. Up next, um, we have uh, Jennifer Caravo, if you're here. Hi, I'm here. Great. Um, Welcome to the committee. Please just introduce yourself as you get going with your testimony. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Gomez and committee members for the opportunity to testify here today. My name is Jennifer Carabue. I am a cottage food business owner, the vice president of the Minnesota Cottage Food Producers Association, and um, I live in Mankato, Minnesota. I am here today, today to testify against House <coughs> File 4486, which exempts cottage food producers, sellers from collecting sales tax on prepared foods. Never in a million years did I picture myself sitting in front of the Minnesota Tax Committee testifying against a bill that attempts to collect, um, exempts the collection of sales tax. But here I am. Currently, the collection of sales tax just like Kathy Zeman said, is required on some of the prepared foods cottage food producer business businesses produce, excuse me, and other prepared food is not. Unfortunately, the Minnesota Department of Revenue currently requires the collection of sales tax on some prepared food based on location instead of the prepared food being sold. So for example, if you sell sauces, pickles, salsa, jams, jellies, spaghetti sauces, pickled vegetables, et cetera, at a farmer's market or community event, the seller is required to collect sales tax. However, if the grocery store is the seller, and I use the word seller because that's how they define things, these same prepared foods are not subject to sales tax. Yet these prepared foods are both shelf stable, just being sold in different locations in Minnesota. So other than where the consumer is purchasing their prepared food, there's no difference. This is neither equitable for the seller nor the consumer. As an association, we have advocated for equitable taxation and we wish that we had had been invited to be part of the discussion that drafted House File 4486. By opposing House File 4486, our board recognizes how our position may impact cottage food business, businesses but feel strongly that thoughtful consideration of all sellers and consumers needs to be the foundation of this legislation. Minnesota Cottage Food Producers Association fully supports equitable taxation reform. This House file does not. We do not support House File 4486's complete exemption of all prepared foods sold by cottage food producers and ask you to make the necessary amendments to make sales tax collection and payment equitable for both sellers and consumers. Um, please let me know if, you, if I can answer any questions for you and thank you for your time and consideration. 
I do want to talk why we say equitable for all consumers and all sellers. Because if we broadly exempt all the prepared food, then our grocery stores and other places like that, there are items we could sell with a fork or different things like that that we would not have to tax, but our grocery stores would have to tax. So I just we just want it to be thoughtful of everybody involved. Thank you for your testimony, um, Ms. Caraview. Appreciate you being here. <clears throat> Next up, do we have Betsy Wentz on? I don't think, uh, Ms. Wentz, if you're here, just uh, speak up. Otherwise, um, just <clears throat> so members know, there are a couple of um, letters in our packets. The flow chart that Representative Brand was speaking to, which um, from the Department of Revenue is on the back of the MFMA letters. And then we do have a letter from Ms. Wentz, who I don't know if we're having like technical problems or she wasn't able to make it, but um, all right. So um, is there anybody else present who wishes to testify on House File 4486? I'm not seeing any. So we'll move to uh, member discussion. Uh, first up, Representative Swidzinski. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just a general question. So just a film, uh, clarification, Representative Brand. So if we're, we do change this law under current, um, do the salsas or prepared foods that are currently being taxed at a farmer's market need to be sealed at the time of sale? Representative Brandt. Um, well, that's an interesting question because we're talking about jars of items, but we're also talking about um, like bread that may be bagged and that sort of thing that's already exempted in this process. And so um, yes and no, I would say, because you can have loose loaves of bread that are bagged when you get to the store as well. I mean, they could be covered in a container and then you pick the loaf of bread from that container like when I see my farmer's market. Representative Swinsinski. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just, you know, kind of along those same lines, um, if it's prepared food, if it's potentially sealed or unsealed, does this exempt, so if, let's say you were a uh, cottage food manufacturer, but also with a, uh, a food license, so you're actually a food vendor as well. So you're sh selling food that was prepared by you at, in a cottage place and then selling it for actual consumption, not at home, but for actual, like you're walking around and you see someone selling a sandwich or you're seeing someone sell a, uh, a, a thing of nachos. Would that be exempt from sales because it's a prepared item? Would, would that seller then, so if, let's say you're just a food truck person like we have out here. If you happen to be selling and you reach your maximum sales of 78,000 or less, would that same manufacturer then, uh, if you're doing that, but at a farmer's market, not have to pay sales tax under this bill? Representative Brand, um, if you, you have an answer, that's cool. We also have um, Ms. Zeman has her hand up, and I think she might like be an expert on this. So yeah, I'd be happy to, to to bunt that one off. I mean, okay. it's a pretty special question, and, and um, although I sell stuff at a farmers market, I don't sell food, so I don't I don't know the answer to that one myself. All right, uh, maybe we could go to um, Ms. Zeman if you're there and have uh, something to answer the representative's question. Thank you, Chair Gomez. Um, yes, you're, you're crossing over those two categories, prepared foods that are defined under Department of Revenue, and then to prepared foods defined under the Department of Health and the Department of Ag. So a cottage food is, uh, is an exemption from licensing and can only be packaged, where at, and packaged is another general term. When you're talking about ready to eat tacos, that is a license under the Department of Health. In that case, all of those foods are will be licensed. So if you go to the flow chart, it really depends on who is the person who mixes the two ingredients. If uh, That's on that left-hand side. If you're the person who mixes the two ingredients, and then you go down and it says, is this a baked item? Then you get to go to the right side, and then you track, toggle down, and then you don't have to pay sales tax. So it, And that's why grocery stores, right, they can sell jams and jellies without sales tax because they didn't prepare it. They bought it wholesale, correct? But, a, but a, the food preparer who mixes those two ingredients that's, and sells directly, that is who is going to need to collect that sales tax. Representative Swidzinski, is that good? Thank you, Madam Chair. That was a good job. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Zeman, for uh, pinch hitting. We appreciate it. Um, Representative Smith. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, just want to say thank you to Rep. Brand. I think this is a, uh, a really helpful bill, kind of one step in a larger uh, hope to make uh, farmers markets and those who grow and sell food at the same time uh, be able to do so easily. Uh, my district, we don't have a lot of growers in district, but being in downtown Rochester where the farmers market is, we have a lot of growers regionally who come in. Mm -hmm. um, I simply wanted to say very quickly the difficulty in this committee as we are talking about this in this particular issue is we are dealing with both health, which is outside of our scope, right? Whether that food is healthy, how it's prepared, who prepares it, um, and then how we tax that, which is obviously something we are very um, uh, interested in and want to make sure it's very clear for both sellers and for the state. So simply wanted to state that, that those are not the same, even though we have to talk about it currently as things are at, and merely to say that I think this is one step in a larger thing that we need to work on to make that farmer's market experience or just cart on the street experience as easy for growers, specifically I would say in southeastern Minnesota, but all, all across the state, um, to make sure that this is both clear to them as well as clear to the state. So thank you, Rep. Brand. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Representative Smith. Um, I, I don't know if there's any other member discussion. I saw that one of our testifiers. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll go to um, our testifier in a moment. We're just going to go to uh, Representative Lee first. I probably signed up too early. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, thank Ms. Zeman for all the work she does um, at expanding farmers markets and their access to um, more uh, consumers and uh, more farmers. Um, we've worked together on other bills before. Um, and I mean, she obviously had already uplifted the flow chart, which I wanted to direct folks to, um, even for folks who do speak English really well. This is incredibly confusing. And so um, thank you to Rip Brand for um, bringing this proposal forward. Um, I always talk about simplifying the tax code for, for both small businesses and um, you know the tax filers. And so um, love this idea. Uh, obviously, it has a fiscal note. So, yes, appreciate uh, Rep. Fran working on it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Representative Lee. Um, Ms. Caraview, did you have something you wanted to add? I agree completely with everything. It is incredibly difficult to follow that flow chart. We get hundreds of questions every year. There are over 10,000 registered cottage food producers. Our concern is equitable taxation and a question regarding the farmer's market and wholesalers and retailers and so on and so forth. The only problem we really see this having is at many of our farmer's markets, we do have retail food handlers and we have cottage food producers. And that's where this topic has really become popular because it isn't equitable how we're collecting sales tax. Now, as a cottage food producer and trying to advocate for cottage foods, um, it may become challenging because we are exempt from licensure already because we have proven that these are safe foods to produce in a home environment locally for our communities and so on and even further out for pet treats. My concern is, is if we have a retail food handler that's having to collect sales tax now, if we're exempted from this, um, for example, I keep bringing up the cake pop because that's something that is sold in your Starbucks, it's sold by your grocery stores, retail food handlers. If a person has gone through that and has gone through the commercial licensing process, it's not going to be equitable for them. So I urge that legislation needs to be done to improve this. I totally agree wholeheartedly. I just really want us to be thoughtful for this because I don't want it to impact cottage foods negatively. Okay. Because there are thank some you. instances. Ms. Careview, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, we've sort of moved past the testimony angle. Yep. Um, I think it sounds like there's maybe a conversation that has to happen um, between you and the author. Uh, Representative Weiner. Okay. Is there any further uh, member discussion on this bill? Representative Joy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick statement. As we continue to work through these tax things like this, you know, in, in uh, retail trade, when we sell Deli Express sandwiches or anything like that, if they buy it from us and don't heat it, we don't have to charge tax on it. If they go back and heat it, we got to charge tax. I think that's another thing we should start looking at in this, this area here as we sit here as tax guys and I own a convenience store and you don't know if they're going to heat that sandwich or not and they buy it and don't then they go heat it or what you got to chase them down so i just think we got to continue working on some tax things for minnesota thank you thank you for that appreciate um the perspective is there any further uh discussion on the bill all right not seeing any uh representative brand do you have any final thoughts for us 
Yeah, just some final thoughts. I just wanted to mention again that baked goods are sold uh, by cottage food producers and they're already exempt from paying taxes. Uh, prepared foods um, sold by fruit and, and uh, vegetable farmers where cottage food producers do have to pay those taxes on those items now. But, you know, of course, we're going to have that conversation offline uh, about that as well. But I really, really appreciate consideration of this bill. And so my motion again is to lay this over for possible inclusion. Excellent. Thank you. So Representative Brand um, renews his motion that House File 4486 be laid over for possible inclusion in the 2024 tax bill. And the bill is laid over. Thank you, Representative Brand. Next up, uh, Representative Davids with House File 4575. As he uh, makes his way to the table, um, Representative Davids is going to move that House File 40, oh wait, 4575 um, be laid over for possible inclusion in the 2024 tax bill. Thank Lead you Davids. so much, uh, Madam Chair and members. I'd also like to move the amendment. Yes, um, so there is an author's amendment. It's coded A2. Um, do you want to move it now? Yes, and basically what this does, it makes it revenue neutral. Excellent. It's not my intention to. Great. Um, is there any discussion on the A2 amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. <laughs> With very little dissent, uh, the motion carries and the A2 uh, amendment is adopted and the bill is in the form the author would like. Representative Davids, to your bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. House file 4575 is a bill that was brought to me by a former uh, DFL legislator, a good friend of mine, Rob Layton, who represents the coin operated uh, industry. And you were so kind, Madam Chair, to come to me on the floor last week and ask if I wanted a hearing on the bill. And I said, sure. Um, then I find out afterwards, as far as witnesses and testimony, they're having their national convention right now. <laughs> and I didn't get invited. So you can see I'm sitting up here with all my friends. Um, with that, uh, as far as the bill itself, uh, with an ever-increasing local uh, sales tax, uh, certain uh, industries are hit harder than others due to the inability to easily collect sales taxes from their customers. This is especially true with coin-operated businesses such as the arcades and video game industry here in Minnesota. These small Minnesota businesses operate all over the state, work with bars and restaurants to provide amusement devices to their customers. Revenues are then split between the restaurants, bars, and the amusement game operators. So the local sales tax relief provided in House File 4575 will also benefit our local uh, restaurants and bars. Coin-operated businesses are uh, at a distinct disadvantage because they cannot simply pass the sales tax on to their customers. Uh, and normally my legislation is groundbreaking, first of its kind. Uh, this legislation, I can't take credit for that because it's also being looked at in Kansas, Texas, and South Dakota. So other states are looking at this. Uh, looking at doing this because it's it's very very hard for them uh, on a coin operated machine to do the uh, local sales taxes so the state still gets their funds um, but then uh, they wouldn't be doing it on the uh, uh, extra amount the local part All so right. it's a great Colin Ray said madam chair that's my story and I'm sticking to it <laughs> Sounds good. Is there any member discussion on House File 4575? Oh, sorry. Is there anybody present who wishes to testify on this bill? Before I move to member discussion. Madam Chair, I think they're Let's all at the see. convention. They're all at the convention. And, um, no. you know, Rep. Davids only attends conventions that are in tropical island kind of places. So, you know, when they move it to Bermuda, I'm sure you'll get your invite. Madam um, Chair, here, yes. today, here today, gone to Maui. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Representative Swidzinski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, there's a small constituency in most of our districts that is concerned that will this also affect like uh, rides? So like the little horsey that you see or a go kart that you see like at the entryway of a uh, of a, a store of business, like you, you know the ones that kind of shake around and stuff. Would that con would that be captured underneath this this bill? Representative Davids to the little shaking horsey. Ma Madam Chair, <laughs> you know, I didn't think this was going to be near as fun as last Thursday, but I think we're getting there. <laughs> we're gonna, uh, maybe Ms. Hagler could answer that. Ms. Hagler, do you have any comment on the little shaking horsey? Wrong key. Wrong key. Um, <laughs> Madam Chair and Representative Swidzinski, I do believe this would um, cover those shaking horsies. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Hagler. Representative Swidzinski? All right. Is there any uh, further discussion to the bill? Representative Weiner. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative Davis, do you feel up to this point in time that the entities involved here have been paying their fair share of these taxes? Uh, Representative Davids. Well, thank you, uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, and to the representative. Uh, they've been paying more than their fair share. Oh. Um, Madam Chair. <laughs> representative Pinto. Uh, uh, Lee Davids. So what is what is their fair share? You say they pay more than their fair share. Representative you know Davids. what the fair share is? I'd like to hear what it is. Thank Madam you. Chair, I didn't bring up the fair share thing. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Chair Davids, or uh, Lee Davids, <laughs> I believe that your uh, comment about them paying more than their fair share does imply that you have an analysis about what that fair share is. Yeah. So if you would just address Representative Pinto's question. Certainly, Madam Chair. Um, paying your fair share, I would simply say, when they say pay your fair share, anything I have to pay is an unfair share. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Davids, for that. <laughs> Representative Smith. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's a real question, Madam Chair. Um, uh, this is a, this is a neutral just a, a question I'm asking because this is uh, like balanced, obviously, with the this fiscal note for us as a state. I'm asking, would this also exempt um, like local option sales taxes, and would local municipalities lose money from this potentially, or is that, is that something that's not currently charged on these devices? Representative Davids. Madam Chair and Representative Smith, I believe they would, and I'm going to go to Ms. Hagler here in a second, but but uh, they do pay the constitutional amendment for the uh, arts and crafts thing or what, what are that, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The legacy amendment. Legacy think, amendment. Uh, Thank you. Representative Thank Davids. I'll, I'll go to Ms. Hagler for the question on local sales taxes. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair and Representative Smith, um, so yes, currently they, they are paying the local sales taxes because they're subject to state sales tax and then anything that's subject to state sales tax also is subject to local tax. However, under this bill, they would not have to pay the local sales taxes because this is a new gross receipts tax not tied to the sales tax. Okay. Representative Smith? Yeah, and no, I think that's a, just a thing to consider, particularly, uh, I don't know if the League of Minnesota Cities or anybody has thoughts on that, but I mean... I just wouldn't want that to be an accidental something that came up from this bill. Thank you. I'm just going to have pity on the league and not call them up for a comment. Um, uh, Representative Swinsinski. Thank you. And just because I was reading your bill, uh, Representative uh, Davids, and it talks about amusement and enjoyment um, in it. And one of the things uh, that sometimes people play is a vending machine uh, as a game and in form of amusement because the snack drops down and then it ends the bottom. Are those folks also going to be exempted because of that amusement uh, uh, bill that you would have? So like, you know, you buy chips or uh, you win chips or you win um, gum or something like that in that game that, that people play, like a vending machine game? Well, Representative Davis. Thank you, Madam Chair. A vending machine, I, I win every time on those. Um, <laughs> so, so I don't believe, no, that's not a coin-operated amusement game. He's not amused. Um, okay. Representative Joy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, do we, this might be a question not just for the author, but do we know if this business has increased paying more taxes or are we seeing a decre decline in this revenue since it's a cash mo mainly driven business? Just curious. Um, I'm not sure. I'm looking at over at our at our uh, experts and I don't think that they have that information in front of them. Okay, Ms. Templin. Madam Chair, Representative Joy, um, in the in the revenue estimate, it does show unknown for the change for sales taxes and the gross receipts tax, and um, the the Department of Revenue um, told me last night that um, they didn't have time to actually get the exact amount that the coin operated or the amusement you know businesses or devices, how much they generated, how much the change would be between the two taxes. But they are looking to get that information um, in the coming weeks. And if they publish that information, I'm sure we'll be able to look back to see the change. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Representative Joy. Thanks, Ms. Templin. Um, we might just have to have another hearing on this, Representative Davids. I don't know. I mean, when we get the information from the department, it might be necessary. Madam Chair, I'd rather eat broken glass. <laughs> <laughs> or watch corn grow, Madam Chair. Duly noted. Um, is there any further discussion to the bill? Not seeing any. Uh, any final thoughts to share with us, Representative Davids? Uh, no. Th uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair, and, and for the questions. 
Um, no, I just hope that this bill as amendment can be laid over for possible inclusion. Absolutely. Um, so with that, Representative Davids renews his motion that House File 4575 as amended be laid over for possible inclusion in the 2024 tax bill, and the bill is laid over. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Davids. Um, so we're not going to be meeting tomorrow. Um, our next meeting will be on Thursday, March 21st. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>